everybody. My name's Mark. This is Middle School Group. Let's check back in with where we left off with Matthew and Gabby last week. And, you know, like one time I think we accidentally made like, um, like mustard gas. Oh. And like we get like these like blue, what was that? Like cupric, cupric phosphate and like do like a cupric phosphate like reaction where like you boil out the water and then like add it back in. And totally. Stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, if anyone's out there who like likes doing this, yeah, lots of natural history too. Like I remember um, finding like nutria skeletons like in the creek by our house and like pulling them out and like reassembling them and stuff. So, yeah. So still yeah. all about that. Normal kid stuff. Yeah, normal kid stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have been a little before middle school. I think I might have been like closer to 10 or, yeah. Man, yeah. I mean, comparatively, our uh, educations were quite different. But um, yeah. I feel like, you know, if I'm still standing on my two feet, you know, compared to the education that you got, then I'm going to do okay um, in life. I never um, assembled any skeletons, but I'm still breathing. So yeah, I feel like if education did that for me, I'm still um, walking and breathing, then then it's going to yeah. be okay. And, you, you know, yeah. professional entomology may not be on the docket um, <laughs> for <laughs> this lifetime. I was, but. well, it kind of depends. Like I was definitely like when I got to college, I was in like remedial math. Mm -hmm. in college mm -hmm. so like you know which didn't really like hold me back but I just had to like go through and do like some catch-up stuff so you know it's definitely like I would definitely not say that like mathematics maths as the as the British say mm -hmm. is like my strong suit and so like wanting to do like quantitative chemistry and quantitative biology which basically is all calculus you know uh you just have yeah like you know I think like just because I didn't like math in middle school like I did not like math but I really like sciences so I don't know I think you know if there are students who have like subjects that seem to conflict like you definitely don't have to let subjects that you're bad at hold you back from other ones that you're good at it's true um, do British really call it math? Yeah, they call it maths, plural. Hmm. Quick maths. Some quick maths. Like, quick maths, like, you know, mental math. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds, that sounds weird for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I won't be saying that anytime soon. Um, yeah. Well, um, Matthew, I only have one question left for you. Um, it's oh, okay. the what is that? most important question. Um, oh. When did you first believe that um, the Bigfoot uh, Sasquatch is real? I don't know. It was kind of like a long journey to, for me. Like, I definitely think, I mean, it's hard to say because, right, like there's such a, such an abundance, like basically everyone has a camera on them at all times now. Mm -hmm. But I definitely think that there's some, you know, I think like the, the, the foot, the footprint evidence from the Pacific Northwest is actually really compelling. Yeah. So like, I've just kind of been, you know, waiting around for some kind of like absolutely can you know every time there's like a, a a big you know like bigfoot ho hoax mm -hmm. like there's some news like you know oh there's the bigfoot i definitely am like hey like this could really be it like i'm just yeah. waiting for them to like have a positive case yeah because like i definitely think you know i mean the pacific northwest is really big right there's mm -hmm. a lot of forest land mm -hmm. there's a lot, a lot of timber land a lot, a lot of it's unexplored we're still mm -hmm. having there's still undescribed species and you know Mm -hmm. when people turn up Bigfoot mm -hmm. and I say when not not if I, I think you know it's going to be we're going to realize that all along there's a lot of evidence mm -hmm. and what yeah. what is a Bigfoot it's some kind of hominid mm -hmm. it's a it's a it's a bipedal hominid mm -hmm. uh 
um, tall in stature, apparently. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it has like, a, I guess like, a, you know, so it, it, in appearance, I think like a, like a tall, hairy ape. Yeah. Uh, a tall, hairy, bipedal ape mm -hmm. uh, with a really strong musk, I understand. Like that's a, that's a, it's like a consistent thing. Like people I've who have like too. Bigfoot sightings will describe the like smell. a really strong odor. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's. Um, any, any woohoos in there? Any, um, you know, weird, um, alienness in there or you know talking to I don't think so yeah I've definitely heard people describe like some kind of like I don't know I would tend to I would tend to um you know rely on more of a uh, a less fantastic explanation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know I definitely have heard people kind of come up with like some woo-woo theories about like you know teleportation and what have you and I just I think it's mysterious enough without you know, trying to reach for something fantastic. But yeah, yeah, it's true. Agreed, agreed. Love yeah. it. Um, yeah. Well, it was good to talk with you. Um, yeah, have a same. wonderful time in Singapore. Thank you. I think I will. Yeah. I'm actually going to go get a haircut. I haven't gotten a haircut. I need me one of those uh, too. These bangs are since, getting you know, too long, too close March, to me. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, and I am so glad that we all got to know you a little bit better, and I'm glad that I got to talk to you about Bigfoot. Um, it's my favorite subject at the moment. I do enjoy Bigfoot. So, um, yes, like I said, toodaloo. Have a great yeah. day. We'll see you. You too. Bye, Gabby. Bye. Magnifying glasses are Awesome. <laughs> well, we're reading today. Oops, just broke my magnifying glass. We're reading today about a guy who magnified the Lord, who magnified Jesus. His name was John the Baptist. He was a wild character. He wore camel skin instead of regular clothes, and he lived in the desert. He ate locusts and wild honey. Yeah, I mean, that's something Austin and Tad would do, like, and Celia Moyer. Celia Moyer would definitely eat locusts and wild honey if it were, like, for a game or something. Oh, yeah, she'd be all over that. So he was a pretty wild character, but he was also on a mission from God to prepare the way for God's salvation. And that, of course, was Jesus. But people were wondering, like, maybe John is the Messiah, and John was preaching and teaching in the desert and he was baptizing people in water and everybody was really excited about him didn't really know who he was or why he was there but he would dip people down dunk them in the Jordan River and it was a sign that they were turning away from sin and turning to God for forgiveness it's called repentance you could say repentance it's us just saying eh, I don't want to live that way anymore God's got a way better plan for me. So we're walking one way and now we're walking the other way. And it's something that we can do every day, moment by moment. We can decide, oh gosh, I'm doing the wrong thing. I should start doing the right thing. It's a way for us to magnify God and show that God is really a part of our lives. And this is one of the things that John said. Let's read it together in Luke chapter 3 verse 7 and 8. When the crowds came to John for baptism, he said, prove by the way that you live that you have repented from your sins and turned to God. And if we were meeting in person, I would love for us to raise our hands and say different ways that we can turn away from sin, that we can show we've turned away from sin. You know, for me, gosh, one of the ways that I had to turn away from sin was doing uh, like wrestling matches, keeping them healthy instead of letting them get out of control and me and my brothers getting angry, right? It's super fun to wrestle and pillow fight, but it can definitely, you know, go the wrong way. So one way we could prove that we're turning away from sin is just making sure that, you know, if we get hurt or something, we just take a break, time out, rather than trying to get even again, get that revenge. Ugh. Yeah, but there's lots of ways that we can prove that we're turning away from sin and towards God's forgiveness, towards God's better plan for our life. This week, I'm sure we're all going to have chances to turn away from sin, turn towards God, and guess what? 
there's going to be days that are harder than others. I had a day this week. Would not want to repeat that day. But guess what? We get to wake up the next day and say, God's mercies are new every morning. And we can turn and repent and say, Lord, yesterday was terrible. I definitely won't, don't want to do that day again. I want to follow your way for my life. Would you pray with me? Here we are, Lord. All our good stuff, all our bad stuff. Today, Lord, we're saying and we want to prove it with our lives that we're turning away from sin and turning towards you. And when we do that, we are going to magnify you and show how awesome you are. So we pray that our lives would be like magnifying glasses, showing how awesome you are. We love you. We thank you for today. Amen. Well, I hope you're encouraged. I hope you give somebody a hug today. I hope you get a hug from somebody. I love you. I know y'all still love me. Let's go love each other. Yeah. Saturday.